but someone who speaks after they're rubbed is like assured a horrible death. So, um, <laughs> but I hope that isn't the case because Dana Stram is certainly my rub in so many ways. I had the honor of being Dr. Stram's student at Stern, and um, I hope. Am I here about the mic? Is that okay? Yeah. My hand is here. So I hope that she will she will forgive me for speaking after. Um, so hopefully I'll do one or two poems for you tonight. They are definitely different tones, and the only thing you really need to know for the first oh I'll introduce myself a little bit here. So my name, as Dr. Trump said, is Gina Davidovich, and I was lucky to be her student at Stern College. And currently I work at EJ Federation and I'm finishing up a master's in Bible and Jewish philosophy at Bernard Bevel School of Graduate Studies, also at Yeshiva University. But my great passion that ties all of those things together is language. And this is really what I love to do, and I'm very honored that you're all here tonight to allow me to do it. So I went, had the blessing of going to Yeshiva Day School for my entire life. But as I'm sure you can imagine, that comes with its tensions and its difficulties. So this is a poem about that. I grew up in a classroom where being a Jewish woman meant that my knees and elbows never got their necessary vitamin D, and my collarbone, well, it was an entity so sexy that no man could see. But to be fair, we were promised all the stars in the sky and grains of sand beside the sea would be our progeny if only we were to adhere to the antiquated principles of modesty. Well, that was never for me, but I did grow up in a classroom where touch was black magic because can't you see that my fingers buzz with the power to turn man into beast, lusting after someone with uncovered hair like me? And I could barely contain my laughter at the hilarity, could barely stand the sincerity in her voice when my best friend in seminary approached our rabbi tall as a tree and asked him how he could stand to ascribe to a religion that looks at him like a pig. I grew up in a classroom where being a Jewish woman meant that I should spend my Fridays breaking bread, but my high holy days standing behind a wall listening to a man's voice proclaim that God is king, maker of words and everything, while I stood behind the partition and wondered if my still, small voice lacked the strength to talk to God? A classroom where only a man was allowed to be interested in the happenings of our marital bed as though he alone held the monopoly on hormones, and now I'm forced to speak in this monotone lest the cadences of my siren-like voice cause <laughs> unintentionally intentional emissions while I'm in the kitchen, prohibited from chanting from the scroll that's supposed to tell me what it means to be a Jewish woman? Am I dirty? Am I bleeding? Am I weak in the knees, perhaps waiting for a man to proclaim that I am worth a donkey, maybe two, and someday even three? I grew up in a classroom where there was a best-selling book that told me it was the first woman who decided for herself that she needed knowledge, but was punished with pain. And in that same book, the woman who holds up the doors of Noah's Ark to keep the floodwaters from pouring in, she, she doesn't even have a name. A book in which God tells Abraham to heed the voice of Sarah, but she ends up in a box with the words, Abraham's beautiful wife of 127 painted next to her on a rock. The same book in which you must seduce your father-in-law to pursue justice and have a man admit to being wrong. This is the classroom in which I was raised, but I never belonged. Because I would spend my adolescent days with pen and paper in the back of the room, feeling feminine mystique rise like steam around dogmatic gloom, from pages where it always seemed like the word woman was a blemish, but an answer that they never fully erased, because even though I was only seven, I could still see the first woman's face, made in the image of God, unaware that one day she would be considered secondary? Known only by the name of her womb and her loom, she's a woman of valor, but no one ever bothers to ask her what's the matter 
When she pours over texts where her name isn't found, the foundation of her life with her feet on the ground, the floor in a room where her ex-ex can't quite sit. Because it's lined with books written by men who never would have deemed her fit. And every year, I would wait for my tradition to embrace a new religion, or perhaps a different tradition, where we could finally give women some recognition for their scholarship and erudition. And when did we forget that the root of the word Israelite means to fight? So tonight, I will barge into the heavenly Beit Midrash between the cherubim's wings and sing, Rabbis, hear my song. I will build the classroom in which I will.